So everyone aware, we are now recording. Um, we have to mute people, we will, uh, just to make sure we keep the meeting moving. Uh, this is aimed more at the Marshlet than the first education programs. Um, the reason for that is there were a bunch of topics that came up that are Marshlet specific. Uh, other officers are more than welcome to attend, uh, particularly Seneschals, because waivers have to do with Seneschals as well. But uh, most of this is aimed at marshals. Uh, we'll touch on some of those other topics as we go through it. Uh, the first thing I want to make sure to let people know, uh, because there was a little miscommunication on this, when we went live, when we announced that we were going live starting tomorrow, uh, we put an artificial cap on groups outside of the pilot group of the Reason Pure Namron uh, joint practice. Um, this meant that they artificially got demoted to phase one until we get the initial feedback before we open it up to a wider audience. That was not intentionally a miscommunication. That was not meant to obscure facts or anything. The spreadsheet still has all the data. You can still go take a look at it. It was the easiest way to not have people accidentally start doing martial art practices. Hello? With phase one. How's it going, everybody? Good. We're gone. Uh, Sorry. So, no, you're good. You're good. Um, so there was not a sudden change of group statuses that demoted them because of local activity or anything. There were a few that did, and they got turned to stop signs because of their local activity. The others were uh, demoted to phase one just because we put that artificial cap in, not because they suddenly got a lot of new cases. Apologize if anyone thought that. Uh, that was just a decision we made Thursday night um, to do this as a slower rollout uh, for the first week for martial practices. Um, how we chose Mamron and Wiesenfuhr is Oklahoma has by far had the lower number of cases uh, throughout this period. Uh, even with the news of the how many ever 222 that have come up in the last week or whatever, that's, that's still significantly lower than most places in Texas. With regards to Namron and Wiesenfuhr, they do a joint practice. It's one of the larger practices in the kingdom. We thought we'd get the best feedback from that group with regards to how well the wearing of face masks are, the enforcement of everything, et cetera. So that's how we got those groups and how we chose those. Um, we did look at doing two different groups, possibly one in North, one in the South. We actually did not have any uh, outside of Oklahoma with a significant practice that could be used. Um, so we stayed with just the one joint practice. That way we didn't have to um, try to pick another group and we weren't going to artificially elevate a group. That will not happen throughout this process. Um, one question that has come up for a few locations is with regards to the um, prison systems and how they're affecting some of the groups. They don't seem to be having a significant impact on them. We will keep an eye on those as we go though, just in case to see if there's something we need to do. But in general, because we're looking at the last 14 days, uh, they don't have a significant impact except uh, one-time events every now and then. They seem to be on top of the prison systems now. So they're trickling in instead of coming in in bursts. All right. Um, now I will start sharing my screen. And this is when it always goes fun for me. All right. Uh, I intentionally did not send this out um, early because we may have to edit things as we go to make it more clear. Um, that way we didn't have people going off and starting their practices uh, before we had a chance to meet with the marshals and figure out if there's wording changes that need to happen uh, to make things more clear. Uh, one of the things that we want to make sure of, no one, no one should feel obligated to attend SCA activities. Um, do what is right for you and yours, always. Um, we are doing this to allow the SCA to open we are not expecting people to have to do it. So uh, what we are, as was discussed in the education, if group marshals aren't able to do it, 
we ask them to find a deputy. Um, but one of the things we're acknowledging is because of decreased attendance during the pandemic, some groups may not be able to hold practices because of insufficient attendance, or there's not an appropriate um, person with enough experience to be the marshal. Uh, those things will happen. Um, one of the things that I'm working on with society marshals, um, we have not gotten the full verbiage for it yet. Uh, we are not reducing any of our safety measures during this. Uh, we're not reducing armor requirements. Uh, we are discussing some methods for doing possible variances uh, for inspection of armor, particularly when you have to push on the grill uh, or uh, fencing masks or helms, uh, how to do that in a better way or um, those types of things. So we're not reducing it, but we may change the process for it. Uh, that's one thing the society marshal wanted to make sure to iterate. Uh, Alan and Ray uh, and their deputies, because Ray's the incoming society marshal, are working on that verbiage because um, they want it to be society wide. Uh, we are the first kingdom requesting any variance for combat, uh, and it's all about that inspection. And mostly it's to make our populace feel comfortable. There's very low risk, I mean, almost maybe non existent risk from touch contact. But given that everything has happened, uh, we've got a lot of agoraphobia, we've got a lot of germophobia going on. Uh, putting your, someone's face or hand in your face is going to make people kind of wiggy right now. Uh, so we want to try to reduce that discomfort that's happening, but still uh, properly inspect equipment. So we're looking at ways to do that. We're talking about different methods. Uh, so we'll see how that comes out in the end. Um, what to expect of our attendees and why? Until further notice, everything is outdoors. Why? Because that has the lowest possible risk um, for any transfer of this respiratory illness. Uh, we do know that some groups hold indoor practices, um, at least until further notice, they'll need to find a new location. Uh, hopefully that is not too much of a burden. Public parks work uh, for the most part. It is not as enjoyable in the summer, um, but it is what we feel is the safest for our populace during this time. And as people are, as I'm going through this, people feel free to use the raise hand button to ask questions. Um, I don't want this to just be me babbling at you for an hour or however long it takes. And Pug, I'll keep an eye on that for you. Thank you, Avery. Uh, we're asked, we are requiring all participants, that's fighters, marshals, archers, thrown weapons folks, et cetera, as well as any spectators in attendance to wear a face mask or equivalent. It must cover the mouth and nose. Um, that is not only when in combat, but when you're off the field as well. Um, the reasons why is that it is transmitted very, via respiratory droplets that land in another person's mouth or nose. Yes, as gross as that sounds, that is what happens. Uh, we don't notice it necessarily in day-to-day -day conversation that we're actually having this happen, but it does. And especially when we're doing combat, it is a, can be a serious threat. Um, so we are reducing that at the source when people exhale. Um, we are requiring both sides to do it because we don't know who has it and who doesn't, and that further reduces the risk. Uh, we're limiting group size based off the local government guidance. Uh, we want to stay happy with the law enforcement. We want to stay happy with our site uh, owners, and so we don't want to raise any risks uh, with that. Um, that still, all those guidance re allow multiple people to uh, multiple groups to be at one physical location as long as it's a big enough space spread out. And we'll cover that here in a little bit. Uh, everyone must acknowledge the health screening, that is participants and spectators. Um, we're wanting to reduce any of the potential transmission vectors even while people are asymptomatic. That's why there's questions on there with regards to uh, have you been exposed in the last 14 days knowingly or gone to certain travel risk areas. 
we are asking uh, and if necessary commanding um, because we're not going to tolerate it uh, people with obvious covid like symptoms to leave uh, people who are actively sick should not be attending anyway, uh, even if it's not COVID. Uh, but uh, in this day and age with the risks associated with it, we have to be very insistent that they leave. Um, we'll cover enforcement here in a little bit, but that is why we're asking. Yes, uh, Your Grace. Oh, I was just going to up. ask about enforcement, but if you're going to cover yep. it later, I'll wait. Yep, it's just a little bit. Um, uh, as I mentioned, we want to keep a clear space between groups. Uh, that's to uh, reduce, uh, <coughs> excuse me, allergies are killing me, um, between groups of people and the martial activities. Um, that's in part to deal with the local regulations, but it's also prolonged exposure because of the respiratory particulates increase your risk. So let's keep space um, with regards to that. We are not allowing minors to participate in phases one and two. Uh, this is due to the increased burden of the safety of the field, as well as the safety of maintaining masks over the mouth and nose. Uh, hopefully by the time we have enough groups at phase three, we'll have experience at that, with that to be able to enforce both. Um, if we have challenges, we will address those as they come up. We have eliminated loaner equipment in phase one. Um, because that's in that's potentially the higher risk uh, in the local area um, because of recent infections occurring um, so we don't want to be passing around even though it's a low low risk we want to reduce that risk in phases two and three we're requiring that loaner equipment to be disinfected uh, to eliminate the potential vectors um, the if groups want to do extended loans of their equipment to well-known members, feel free. That's always been up to you. Uh, as well, if you don't want to have loaner equipment because of the additional headaches, that's up to you. Uh, we got a hand up with Elric. Yep, Don Elric. Yeah, I was just wanting to get some clarification on the disinfecting. Uh, yes. I understand things like the swords, the bucklers, um, solid things, but what about on cloth? Uh, the most common disinfectant is Lysol, um, and it is it kills on contact. Uh, so as long as you spray it, it, it should be. It, you've got to make sure to do a good spread of it. But other than that, uh, that's all that's required. Uh, the CDC guidance, um, which is in the um, at the end of this document, has for all different types of materials what to do. But for our purposes, Lysol is probably going to be the simplest to have available. Uh, it kills coronavirus, including the one associated with COVID. That is a little bit difficult to come by right now. Um, but we do have some like Lysol, um, not the spray like what you're talking about that we could use for some other equipment. I'm figuring we'll probably not allow sharing of the hoods at the very least. That, that, that makes sense. And I'm allowing each group to have some flexibility with that as long as they do properly uh, clean or disinfect it. Uh, also, one well. of the, sorry, also one ahead, of the that has been discussed is the uh, possibility of long-term checkout of equipment. So basically, as long as we are in this stage, if you have you know, a local person that you know is there on a regular basis, you can check out a mask, you know, a hood, whatever and they are responsible for their for getting that back and getting it cleaned and they're the only ones who ever touch it. And That's a good idea, Aldrich, thank you. Yeah, Aldrich Kerr has his hand up. Aldrich? Aldrich? Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. Uh, so the, the question I have about that, about uh, signing stuff out, one of the things that I noticed that when I was initial reason for it was that we were all we were signing things out long term, and that the uh, loaner equipment is actually the property of that group. That so, does that not require that we get the financial committee approval to loan things out on a that long term? That varies basis? by group. Um, some groups allow it. Some require financial committee approval. 
I don't know what your financial committee requires. That's why it's, they're allowed to, but you've got to figure out if that is allowed. Okay. Um, many groups do allow it, but some financial policies don't. So uh, unfortunately yeah, I just, it does I, require finding that out. Yeah, I, I don't recall it as having it in our financial policy, um, but it's just, I know it's been a concern in the past of things disappearing uh, because we loaned them out and never were getting them returned. So that was something that we had talked about at one time, but never fully implemented. And yeah, that is, up to, sorry, that is also, again, up to the individual groups. If that is something the group doesn't feel comfortable with doing, then don't do it. But it is an option that is out there if that is something people are comfortable with. Yep, and it's best to ask your exchequer um, if there's any doubt. They will tell you if the financial policy allows it or if they require approval of the financial committee. Yeah, and on the, the, the appendix, there's a list of sites, including the CDC. It does tell you how to make um, dis disinfectants, um, DIY type disinfectants, uh, when you can't get a hold of Lysol and other things. Um, it's one of the things you may want to ask your populace to donate uh, because some people may have a surplus of it, uh, others may not. And it looks like you got a volunteer even. All right, um, because of concerns with food and drink, we're saying no shared food and drink. Um, I don't know how common these are at martial practices. Um, the ones I've been to, they haven't existed, but um, just in case we're doing that as a reduction of common transmission vectors. Um, a lot of these things that came out early with regards to COVID uh, were general good practices uh, to reduce virus transfers and bacterial transfers. Um, they're finding some of those may not matter, but we're gonna keep some of those um, at least until we get more knowledge um, just to be on the safe side. Better, better safe in most cases. All right, enforcement. Uh, this is for any compliance issue. That's failure to wear a mask, failure to leave, um, those types of things. Um, if someone refuses to comply or becomes a systemic challenge at multiple practices, um, they're, they're not uh, wearing their mask when they get there multiple times, uh, they take it off in the middle of practice and do that multiple times, they always start with a verbal warning. Um, that is by, I mean, that's the normal process. Um, if someone refuses to comply, that is now made it a risk for the practice. It needs to be closed. The person needs to be reported uh, to the upline and copying the relevant kingdom marshal. So Joffrey for armored, uh, Etienne for rapier, um, uh, Wintiliana, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and copy the Earl Marshal. Um, we are likely to do sanctions early and often in this case. Uh, Christopher? So with it getting hot, it being Texas and all, I'm imagining this switch to having to keep a mask right over their face the whole time is going to have some negative effects on some people. If they move away from where activities are taking place so they can pull the mask off and take a breather, is that acceptable? As long as it is significantly away, that is acceptable, yes. We, we want them to be far enough away to not have people walk up and start talking to them, for example. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Palazzo has a, has a question. Go for it, Palazzo. Palazzo. Okay, sorry, I had to unmute it. Hey, Orlando, how's it going, guys? Uh, oh, okay. So I just had a quick question. We tried out um, uh, the masks, um, the uh, the plastic inserts. Um, uh, we had a practice at Alrix the other day where we we did like the full on thing as a complete unofficial thing. By the way, yep, yep, uh, I've just, done that like, myself. And just a, just a handful of people. But one thing we had come up with was the idea of using. Um, 
duct tape across that bottom part of the mask um, to cover up up to the nose area that the plastic would normally cover. Would would that sort of thing uh, be be possible to do with this? And, I consider and it, that more equivalent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it is we, a solid I, barrier. It must be solid across yeah. that area from below the chin to midway up the nose. It needs to be a solid barrier. Yeah. So a lot of people. Plastic was an example. Already. Yeah. So so duct tape. I mean, honestly, you could just you could just do strips of duct duct tape all the way up to above the nose uh, on the inside of your helm or mask, and uh, that that should count as a uh, as an acceptable barrier. What about like yes, it works easier on the well, fencing side of the house than it does on the armored. Yeah, the the grill is a little is a little tougher to work with. Yeah. Okay, that that was all that I wanted to bring up. Yes, so that is considered equivalent. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if uh, the other thing we need to make sure of a compliance issue is if people are harassing others, either <laughs> to attend practice or to not attend practice, they need to be reported to the Kingdom Seneschal for potential bullying investigation. These are not acceptable behaviors. And just to, so everyone knows, I am not going to have very much sympathy on the on this happening at all. Uh, Cristobal has hand up. Cristobal. Yeah, somebody just mentioned something in the chat that brings up a good point. So if a participant's choosing to use the face shield or duct tape or whatever attached to their mask or to their mask, does that mean they have to keep their mask on the entire practice? Uh, if they take their mask off, they have to put a uh, their helm off. They have to put a face mask on. So thank you, Thomas. Is that good enough? And it should be done with enough distance. Yes, yes. That, that is uh, Cristobal again. Or did you no, not put your hand down, Gabriel? Okay, uh, I know I know that later on down on the page it mentions uh, non skadians but might as well point it out here. All our uh, yes, all our the order of this may here. not be the best. Yeah, uh, so I mean, we're talking my, about my this section that, here. Uh, practices are in public places. People don't care. One, you know, that are not skadians don't care at all about you know sanctions or whatever. Uh, it basically, is our recourse that we shut down practice and disperse if we have some people show up and they won't go away? That is unfortunately our recourse at this time, yes. Uh, I, I don't know that we'll have that unless we get drunks showing up, uh, which we have had locally. Uh, most people understand this. Um, and I'm encouraging have one person split off of the group and go talk to them about it so they understand. All right. Um, so we started talking about the face masks are equivalent. Um, this is an absolute requirement. If you have it attached to the inside of your helm, a face mask, but, um, you have to, or fencing mask, when you take it off, you have to put a cloth covering or paper covering, whatever face mask on. Um, again, be insistent, but polite. And if they don't, then we go up to compliance issues. Um, if anyone notices, and this is anyone, so I'm going to make sure that general combatants and uh, archers and others know this, uh, spot a mask slipping. Uh, and this says during combat, but it's during any activity. It needs to be called a hold in order to fix the mask. Uh, this is a particularly important during combat because of the close proximity and those respiratory droplets coming out and landing. Um, somebody has a question in the chat as far as uh, distances from mat without the mask. My understanding is 10 to 15 feet is about right if you're yeah. not wearing masks. Yeah, minimum 10 feet from the group, um, more if, if possible, so. All right, uh, the closed combat hold time. 
Have I gotten to that point already? Did I... Um, I, I will cover that one in a second. So uh, I'm bouncing around. I'm trying to keep up with everybody. Uh, so solid barriers, uh, this has changed differently from when we had the initial one. An example is clear plastic, uh, duct tape works, um, other things work. Um, closed face um, helms work as long as they have no openings uh, for it to come out of. If there's any openings, those must be covered up with a solid material. Uh, and it's from below the chin to above mid nose. That's the area that you would be uh, exhaling from. Uh, da, da, da. So I'll get to the time between close combat here in just a little bit. Uh, health screening, everyone must acknowledge the health screening. Uh, that is a link to it. Uh, everyone should have it available. They need to be able to answer yes or uh, if, if they answer yes or refuse to answer, they are required to leave. Um, anyone uh, but this is focused on warranted marshals which includes the local marshals warrant authorizing marshals regional marshals kingdom marshals um, they need to it is on their shoulders and part of the reason that we're making sure to call this out for the additional warrants is that if not all the people at local practices may have the status necessary to feel comfortable telling some duke um, to leave so use the people present um, to your advantage. If we find out a Duke is using that, and I'm using that just as a generic because that's, it's not a Gabriel or any particular person, but it's people have challenges questioning authority. Um, so even if it's his majesty, um, you have to be polite, but insistent asking them uh, to, to leave. Um, and this is, for the COVID-like symptoms, we want additional eyes looking at this. Uh, Baron Mikolay? Um, Back real quick to the health screening. You say everyone must yes. acknowledge. Uh, what form is that? Is there? Do they need to sign something that says it, or is it just a verbal acknowledgement? And do we? It is a verbal acknowledgement of yes or no. Um, no is the answer you're looking for. Yes means they have a risk and need to leave. So, and is that just done, like, when anybody comes to practice, that's when we start yes. asking that, basically? Yep. And just so people are aware, here is it. I'm opening it up. So, have you experienced a fever? I've um, been experiencing this. A persistent cough without the seasonal allergies. Uh, anything that is abnormal with regards to a lot of the other symptoms associated with COVID or in the last 14 days cared for someone or been in close contact uh, with someone positively diagnosed or visited one of the restricted countries. Answering yes to any of the above disallows you from SE activities. If it's been 13 days, that's not long enough. It has to be 14, come back next week. We've got a couple of hands up, uh, Elric first. So um, as far as that's concerned, we'll probably want to do that at the same time that they're signing the waivers. Um, our um, Baron and Baroness are planning on coming out to be extra um, heavyweights in case we need that. We don't expect it, but just in case, we'll make sure that we have at least one seneschal there also to back up any martial um, issues that are encountered. Uh, your Grace Gabriel, since I started bad mouthing you. <laughs> uh, line forms to the left of that um question uh it's all individuals must answer the question can we do like a group call like anybody who has had this symptom raise your hand or is that uh, yes that is perfectly acceptable that's still acknowledging it so uh, i don't care how it's done as long as everyone present does it got it um and part of the reason we're asking additional people to help with the looking for symptoms is if people started showing symptoms over the over the course of the evening, it's just more eyes looking at it. People with pre-existing conditions, such as me, um, are should not be penalized unless they're showing other symptoms. So I have a recurring cough. Um, no, the question does not fall under HIPAA. We are not a medical organization. And these, these questionnaires fall under the um, 
uh, equal opportunity ADA guidance is acceptable during a pandemic. So it, we're covered on all sorts of bases. I mean, um, so people who have a recurring cough shouldn't be asked to leave just because of that. Uh, but if you don't know it, um, at least ask them about it. Um, and one of the recommendations is place it where it's easy for people to, to read it without physically contact, physical contact, put it on a table, uh, put it somewhere, uh, doing the verbal acknowledgements perfectly acceptable. Um, let, let's, even though contact is minimal, let's reduce the amount of contact we have. Um, Avery, have we heard back if the method on the electronic signatures are going to be okay? No, we have not, shockingly okay. enough. Um, as soon as we hear, um, we'll let you know. Yeah, if we get that, uh, that will be the method that, uh, and sorry, this should not say all attendees, all, all, all people who have to sign it. Um, we cannot require blue card members to sign waivers. Um, in case people did not hear that, we cannot require blue card members to sign waivers. <coughs> um, that is a society rule from many years ago. Um, some groups have used it for sign-in sheets. That has been ruled as not acceptable. Um, uh, that, that's perfectly fine, yes. Um, uh, using a plastic cover sheet, uh, laminating it, uh, these types of things, um, that's fine. It's just reduce the amount of contact we have for paper. Uh, with regards to, uh, so we will be doing paper waivers for now. Uh, until we get this society approval. So that should be, again, placed in a, put somewhere so it's easily signed uh, with minimal physical contact. Some groups can put out tables uh, to do this. Um, Bringalog, we have a picnic table sitting right there. Uh, yes, this is on the Kingdom site. It will be sent out at the end of the meeting. I wanted to make sure to see if I had any edits before sending it out for those who didn't attend. Um, and based off some of the questions, I may reorder these um, because to be better grouped together that is because it sounds like some of the topics are related. Uh, the group sizes, um, they gotta be at least 10 feet away to not be considered part of the group. If you have multiple groups, each group needs to be a minimum 10 feet away. If you got more space, use more space. Let's not give them a reason to, to say that Oh, well, you're, you're skirting the rules. No, let's have a clear distance between those. Uh, that's primarily aimed at Texas um, because we have stricter requirements than Oklahoma. Um, but um, if, you, if we have a group in Oklahoma that gets more than 35 people at a practice, um, or 50 people to practice, sorry, uh, in phase two, make two groups. Um, if you have more that show up, split the groups roughly in half so that you have everyone can participate equally. You don't want, you got two extra people show up and they're all fighting by themselves. Let, let's try to make sure everyone has equal. We don't want people mixing between groups uh, once the groups are established. Uh, that's one of the ways to reduce the stuff and is in the regular plan. Uh, we talked about the non-SCA folks showing up. Uh, just have one person go meet them, explain why we're doing it. Most people are polite and we'll follow that. Uh, if we have people who are not, then we will um, notify them that if they don't, we'll have to stop and disperse. Um, and I will make sure to add that to above. Uh, some of the Marshall specifics, uh, we've covered a few of these as, as questions have come in, but all of it. We're doing no combat during phase one. Uh, any group that is in phase one, uh, no combat. Target archery, thrown weapons, equestrian games only. Uh, this is out of date. I don't know how I missed that. Um, Thursday night we changed this, so I'll fix this. We have no minor participation uh, at all in phases one and two. So let me fix that and refresh this so that people, so I don't forget. Uh, there's a question in the chat uh, you might want to look at. Okay. Uh, 
I'm not sure I understand the question, Sean. Phases three to one and back to three. Are you talking about uh, a phase three group that gets demoted to phase one or something else? It looks like what he's asking about is um, people from different phases. Oh, okay, different phases. Um, uh, that was uh, updated in the plan. Uh, phase one cannot leave their local group. Phase two can only go to phase two groups. Phase three can go to phase two, but they need to be aware, and this is written into the plan now, that they need to be aware of the higher risk associated with that. Um, but we are not allowing anyone to go to phase one groups, and phase one groups cannot travel to any other group. Uh, so folks are aware, uh, because this has come up several times, um, and some people join late. The current publishing of the phases for one, um, that is artificially capped for most of the groups right now while we do this first week of pilot with Namron and Wiesen Uh We are going by age. Uh, so yeah. Unfortunately, we have to go by the legal definition of minors. And I have to repeat these because people don't see the questions in the video recorded. So. Uh, for minors, we are going by age of majority for the state, which ours are uh, 18, unless they're emancipated uh, uh, minors. All right. Uh, when people are fighting close to close, face to face, and this came up earlier in the chat, and I said I'd cover it in a little while. Um, gone on for an extended period. I intentionally did not put a time period here um, because um, I'm not sure what it should be. Um, with regards to the face-to-face, -face, uh, the CDC guidance with regards to close contact, so everyone is aware, is that you are primarily, it's covering indoor spaces for more than 15 minutes at a time. Um, but we don't want people, especially on the heavy field, being core to core uh, for several minutes at a time. Uh, if it's 30 seconds, that's probably starting to push the edge. Uh, so, but I didn't want to put a hard and fast in here because people go in, they fight, they separate. So it's that long time in where the, since we're outdoors, the air can't take the particulates away in a, a reasonable amount of time. Um, I didn't want them to be calling hold because we went in, we fought, we separated, we went back in, we fought hold. Uh, let's let's I, if I have to come down with a real reason or a real number, I will at some point. But for now, I think we need a little bit of common sense as people are separating uh, during the fight. Uh, Their Excellencies of uh, Bringalod asks about no minor participation or no minors in attendance uh, for phases one and two in Texas. The only attendance allowed are the combatants, marshals, officers. So minors are not allowed in attendance. Uh, we have no part, we have no spectators in phases one and two in Texas because of the Texas guidelines. In California, er, in California, in Oklahoma, um, they are allowed spectators. Uh, I'm okay with spectators being in attendance, but the parents need to be responsible for keeping the face mask on. It is not the marshal's job. If the marshal or another officer notices this is happening, the person needs to be asked to. Uh, leave and I will add that as a clarification. Oh, that yes, uh, Sean brought up that uh, we can show people their current uh, status on their phones. That's part of why this is on the website, is so everyone has access to it. That'll let people know. Um, during the pandemic, we are trying to reduce manual manipulation of equipment in order to reduce that contact, particularly armor inspections, uh, where we're face-to-face. -face. Uh, both people have a mask on, but we uh, want to minimize how much we're touching um, other stuff to reduce that potential transfer. Uh, so equipment previously not visible may need to be shown or demonstrated to be appropriate. For elbows, that's fine if the fighter themselves does it, same with knees and whatnot. Uh, we're waiting for society to determine the 
uh, what is going to be accepted society-wide for the manipulation of the helm uh, or fencing mask. Uh, until we get that um, use of disposable gloves or sandwich bags uh, should be used to confirm the safety. That's particularly on the heavy side, it is pushing on the face uh, in order to make sure it doesn't hit the face. Uh, and on the fencing side, it's that as well as it doesn't come off uh, during fighting. Uh, uh, Grace Gabriel? Yeah. Right. Uh, can you please clarify that statement you made about spectators? Uh, is that by a phase or totally? Because there's parts of the page where you talk about what spectators can do. It is by phase. Um, and Texas and Oklahoma have slightly different rules in phase two. In phase one and two, in phase one, there are no spectators allowed, uh, only the uh, active participants and marshals and officers. In phase two in Texas, um, it is the same, no spectators. Uh, Oklahoma, uh, their state guidance was different. So we are allowing spectators in phase two. They're limited to a group size of 50, um, which is rather large, is the CDC guidance though. Um, okay, so I, I just, it is I by just, phase. In phase three, spectators are allowed. I just found out the phase descriptions. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, Robert? Steps here. Um, we've got a person who fights who has a seizure disorder, and his spouse comes with him to practice. Is that violate the spectator rule? or? Um, I consider that a medical necessity. Um, that is to me a, a equivalent um, of the participant. So uh, in the case of a required for medical, um, that is not a spectator, that is an extension of the fighter. All right, thank you. I will clarify that though. I, I would question if they wanna do it in phase one or two, just in general, uh, but I'm not going to uh, enforce that because well, I'm not allowed to technically ask um, by all the different guidelines. Uh, Sean has brought up a comment about uh, having sanitizer available for the fighters to spray down their own equipment. Uh, that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, most equipment, most things um, out there are uh, considered disinfected after three days of sitting. Uh, unless they've been sitting wet or in certain conditions, but the CDC website will tell you those different criteria. Uh, with the history of heat injuries that the spouse come to drive them, can that still occur? Uh, that is again, Mary, uh, that would be a, an extension of the combatant because it's required for medical necessity. Um, if someone has to bring their, it, it it's an extension like a, a service animal. Humans happen to be animals. All right. So spouse service animals, I like that. Yes, as long as it's for a medical reason. Uh, I'm not sure my spouse would like to hear that. Uh, uh, what we do not enforce, uh, and this is what I was uh, alluding to just a second ago. We don't, uh, we don't enforce at risk of in individuals attendance. Um, it is not our place to ask either a person's age nor their health conditions. Uh, the health questionnaire is uh, what is allowed to be asked and not specifics about do you have a pre-existing immune issue, a pre-existing lung issue, high blood pressure, et cetera. Many of the things that are at risk um, are invisible um, conditions. So it's not something that's obvious and we're not allowed. Uh, who makes up a residence? Um, some people are calling pods or bubbles. Um, this is uh, because the SCA is made up of alternative lifestyles. It's not our place to question who lives with who and who's in what type of relationship with who. Um, that will primarily only be an issue um, uh, when we have the smaller groups. Um, actually, that's less of an issue than it was because we made masks mandatory across the board. Uh, but uh, when we have those types of activities, and this may extend to when we have events, uh, we'll revisit this. 
uh, at this time, uh, and this is something um, that has been questioned, um, we are not recording who is in attendance of at practices. Uh, part of the reason that we are not doing that um, is uh, some of the privacy stuff that we don't want to get involved with. Uh, but the other factor is if the SCA of any sort is notified by one of the tracing programs in Texas or Oklahoma, that someone attended po tested positive, we have to communicate it to everyone anyway. Um, so that people who have second level um, contact are aware. Um, if we know who attended by um, pattern by matter of elimination, you could identify who the individual is, and that is disallowed by uh, all the HIPAA guidelines, which the tracing programs do fall under, and we don't want to put ourselves at risk in any of those. Uh, Elric, Don Elric again? Yeah, so um, you're just talking about like official recording making a list. This is not prohibiting us from taking pictures of fighters and stuff like that. Correct? Oh no 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 no! Yeah, this is just an official roster type of thing. Okay, thank you. And we still have to have waivers, um, so people who aren't blue card members still have to sign those. But it's just an official list of it. We're not getting into any of the pictures <laughs> that we already take as part of practices, et cetera. So. Uh, reporting and communication uh, weekly. Um, before your practice, you need to review the reopen status page to determine your branch's status and any changes in guidance. Uh, those will be highlighted going forward um, so that they are clear and easy to find uh, what the changes are. Uh, there will be an indicator up or down if your group has changed status. If you've gone from phase one to phase two, there'll be an up arrow saying, showing that you went up. If you went from two to one, there'll be a down arrow. That way you have that quick visual cue that something changed and you need to be aware of it. Uh, same with the uh, changes of guidance. There'll be a summary at the top and then highlighted when we get down in the text. Uh, one of the things uh, that has been a challenge across the known world uh, is working with appropriate branch officers to update of, uh, local event information. Uh, when I say local events, I'm talking about practices, meetings, whatever. Uh, those need to be updated so that people do not attend when you're not having them. Um, that could be a website. Some people have Google calendars, Facebook events, whatever. I don't say who because each branch does it differently. Um, it just needs to be done. And the marshal needs to make sure your portion of this is correct within those different areas. Um, after each practice, um, and I'm going to get feedback on this here in just a second, we're asking marshals and participants to fill out a feedback form uh, that, so we can gather information on the challenges and risks, especially as we start moving towards having events. And then on your recurring reports, which have been pretty boring as of late, um, should indicate the current, uh, that word is wrong, uh, status of branch practices, uh, whether they're occurring or not, the size of attendees, um, et cetera. You guys get to see the sausage being made here. So right now the COVID feedback form is not very exciting. Um, it's asking which branch you're from. Hell, I realized I don't even ask who you are. Oh, no, I do, down here. Uh, the date of the practice in question, who is submitting it, um, branch marshal, participant, or others. That'd be a spectator, for example. Uh, I may put that as a specific entry just to make it more obvious. Um, other could be officers, uh, things like that. Um, the type of practice that it was. Uh, so Sean just asked a clarifying question that if people are not willing to wear masks um, after being asked, our response is that we close practice. Um, we ask them to leave first. If they are unwilling to leave, we close practice. Is that clear, Sean? 
Thank you. So yeah, uh, we, we politely ask them to put it on. If they don't, we insist they put it on. If they don't, we ask them to leave, insist they leave. If they don't, we close practice. I'll make that a little more clear of the multiple steps of, of assertiveness. And I will also throw in there that if somebody tries to pull something where they say, oh, come on, you can bend the rules, let them know. From the Kingdom Seneschal, this is not from the Kingdom Marshal as far as closing down the practice. This is from the Kingdom Seneschal. If I find out groups are violating these rules, I will come down on the group itself hard. And His Majesty uh, has already stated that he will do the same from the Crown. So please don't. This is from all three of us. We are coming down on people who do not adhere to this. We want to keep our people safe. We want to reduce the risk. We cannot eliminate risk. We are reducing it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Cornelius brought up about someone intentionally trying to stop the practice. I don't have a good answer for that, uh, but notify us immediately and we will take prompt action on against them. Uh, we won't be able to stop it the first week it happens, but we should be able to stop it by the second. We are going to be that prompt at taking action. And um, also, we are in the modern times. Somebody's really doing that, pull out your phone. Start, gi give me a video of it. Give me something, give Pug something, give the Crown something, so we can actually act on it. That it's not just a he said, she said. It's a, no, really, we got video of this person doing this. Yep. Please do. It helps us when the, if an appeal goes up. And by the way, society's already said they're going to support us. You're allowed to appeal. It is unlikely to do any good. Uh, the next thing we're asking people to do is the estimated temperature at the start or end of practice. Uh, I highly encourage using the OSHA app, uh, which does the heat index fairly accurately to the, to the place you're at. Uh, that's what I use after the challenges came up from some kingdoms because of a heat related death. Uh, to show that on Stewart would not be able to have practices uh, most of the year if we met some of the goals they were trying to hit. Um, it's just not feasible given our temperatures. Uh, it's all about climatization. Uh, describe the types and quantity of face masks in use. Uh, that includes if you're doing uh, duct tape inside the helm um, or other types of stuff. Describe that. I started to put this in as a bunch of check boxes and I realized it, it just wasn't going to make sense at that point. So we're asking for a, a verbal description of it. And then describe the experience the participants have and any challenges you have. I'll make sure to add challenges. Uh, so if people are having problems keeping their face masks staying up, we need to know that. Um, as a FYI for, from some people who have done this, uh, it's actually not too bad while you're fighting with a face mask. When I took my helm off, I immediately inhaled my face mask. Uh, it had been nice and tight with the cheek plates. And once that came off and the face mask loosened, I inhaled it. So you got to be very good at breath control. All of us are going to learn to be much better at that as we go. Uh, one of the uh, things that, real quick, I just want to throw in, one of the things that was realized when we did the test run of it was, while fighting, people were very aware of their breathing and generally did not have problems. It was the two to three minutes after they came off the field when you're breathing hard that you just automatically start sucking air that suddenly your body tries to do this and the mask goes, no, 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 you can't do that right now. So everyone is gonna have to learn as they come off the field that first three, four minutes when, when you get your, your helmet or your mask off, you still have to consider doing combat breathing so that you don't end up just sucking in your mask. Yeah, and for the, the solid uh, surfaces, I used clear plastic just so I could see what was happening. Um, there were two key indicators. One, you can see the respiratory particulates very obviously, it's kind of gross. Um, but that meant that that was stopping and not going into my opponent's face. Uh, but two, uh, I, had a, I had a full face, and so when I was breathing, I had to be careful or else it just fogged up. Uh, that would be less of an issue with the ones that only go to the nose, uh, but uh, you, you will want to wipe down the inside of those surfaces once you're done fighting. 
Mistress Caitlin? Uh, basically, I wanted to clarify from early on about uh, the loan equipment. Yes. In phase one, which is primarily only missile activities, it says no loaner equipment. Is permanent loan out of some of that considered no longer loaner and they can use it? That is considered no longer loaner in my opinion. Um, that is someone who has equipment on long-term loan. Okay. That's not changing people throughout the evening. And Cornelius had a question. Cornel Don Cornelius? Uh, yeah, I had a question regarding what uh, Elric was talking about regarding the uh, duct tape on the inside of the mask earlier. Um, mm -hmm. It reminded me of uh, the practice we had the other day uh, that Orlando was talking about. And in that practice, uh, Elric had thought that I had put uh, my mask up against the, the mesh of the, uh, of the mask, of the fighter, fighter mask, my, when I was actually wearing it against my face. Is that something that we could potentially do given the breathability of the mask? Would that be something that's not considered solid enough to do that? Or is that a possible option? Uh, let me think on mask. that option. Let me think on that one. I'm not gonna give an answer tonight. So okay. for now, the answer is no. Okay. But I will think about a potential change of that. All right, uh, Logard with. Goldweird? Yes, I'm sorry about that. Um, um, going back to the food, because my connection dropped out, I know that we're not allowed to, to share any food that are open. What about commercially prepackaged foods? For martial practices, we're saying no. Uh, when we get to events, there'll be a completely different set of rules. OK. Um, and for practices, we're just saying bring your own. Thank you. Uh, Baron Michele and Baroness Oliana. Not sure who uh, it is because I can't see you. Yeah, we're good. Um, so two questions. Does that mean then like we couldn't bring a flat of bottled water and give them out to people? At this time, we're saying no. Um, I will think about that with prepackaged foods, but for now it is no. Okay, uh, and then the other one I was gonna ask first, where is this survey that you have here? Where will that be to get? Uh, to it is, it will be mailed out to everyone, but it's in, it's on this website that will be mailed out. It will be okay. added to the plan as well. It'll be on the so plan. I'm gonna make it available right. everywhere I can. Uh, so Sean, right now we're saying, no, we can't grab water bottles from someone else's ice chest. Uh, we will, I will uh, consider the prepackaged foods, um, but we're trying to reduce the contact transfer is why we're not having shared um, food, or food and drinks. It is a low risk, so we'll, re we'll consider it, but right now it's a no. Uh, Robert? Robert, you're muted. I'm sorry, this is uh, Kyle with Steps. I'm just- Okay. I'm really worried if we don't, if we can't at least bring a sealed pack of bottled water in Texas heat, I'm more worried about dehydration among idiots than I am about COVID killing somebody. Um, I think that if we don't have adults that can't bring their own water, uh, we have other issues. I agree. Uh, but at this point, people need to be adults. Fair enough, sir. We'll need to make that very clear in any announcements we make of uh, practice, like for the visa for coming up this week, especially. I'm not used to having practices where people bring shared bottled water. So I could be biased uh, by my experiences. How common is that across the groups? We do it, or we did do like it. People chip into a pool and they have bottled water. We don't usually do it on radio because we've been inside, but uh, it's been a fairly common practice at archery. Okay. I will talk to the Kingdom Seneschal and the Crown at our meeting coming up later in the week about that and let folks know. Um, so from the, 
looks like we got some in the group uh, from the chat that are saying it's common, others it's not because they have water fountains. Uh, so it seems to be a mix. All right, but we'll we'll consider that in this week's meeting. Uh, Colfina? You were too fast. Um, this may have been addressed. I had to step away for a second. Um, are we okay with um, I'm addressing this week's practice specifically with Namron and Vison Pure. Are, are we okay with doing things that are a little stricter than what's already been done? For example, our armored car, armored combat marshals have stated no spectators, and our rapier marshal has requested no spectators. Are we we good with that? You are absolutely allowed to be stricter. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Arthur, right now we don't want uh, shared containers such as igloo um, water uh, containers. Um, what we will consider is the prepackaged water um, if that's available. Um, it it's, comes down from the common practice of reducing viral and bacterial transfer through the most common methods. I don't know that the risk is really higher. Uh, but we want to stay on the safest side that we can. All right, uh, petition process since this may occur. Um, it's not going to occur this first week because we're only allowing one group um, to do level two. And I don't know for those doing archery, um, throwing weapons, how many will have it, but it'll take them at least a week to start the petitions. But here is the process. Um, we're, we're hoping that these are rare and that the normal process of assigning deputies will follow the guidance, uh, will allow groups to open. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meetings, if there's not enough participants, it's not going to happen anyway. So the appeal will follow the standard chain of complaint slash appeal that's documented in law and uh, Kapora. I will give you a heads up that if you get past the crown, uh, you're not likely going to get uh, favorable news. Um, so the process itself is four or more participants in the same martial form, so rapier, archery, uh, armored combat, thrown weapons, equestrian. They write to the upline officer, uh, that's regional for rapier and armor, and deputy for those above that. Um, sorry, I'm getting texted. Got to make it shut up. Uh, it needs to include uh, all these data points with regards to it. Um, we are asking for membership numbers and expirations if available. We know that in this kingdom we are not a pay to play, um, but we're asking for that because if someone is deputized, they must be a member and we need to know when it expires um, if that occurs. Uh, we're asking for copies of participant authorizations because below me, uh, it is not something that people can easily look up as far as the officer, uh, uh, the regionals and the deputy kingdom. Uh, we're working on making that available right now. It's not. So we're asking people to provide copies of that. Um, we want you to write a verbal or written experience of the participants, um, include what they've done as martial activities and what they have as far as marshaling background. Um, have they been marshal in charge? Have they previously been a branch marshal? Um, and that can be for this activity or any other activity. We just want that type of information. And of the four participants, which one is being requested to be appointed as the interim uh, branch marshal? Um, the reason that you're requesting this, um, we want to understand your reasoning for it. Uh, our marshal isn't willing to do it is part of the justification, but we need to know the other aspects of it. Um, and then as you're doing that, it's, and that will take into account things like how often these people go to practices, how frequent are they going to be having them, those types of things. And then how will the group adhere to the requirements of practices, reporting, and COVID enforcement? Uh, we want to see that you understand the processes for these. Um, if the upline officer doesn't respond within five weekdays or denies the request, they can petition to the next step. And that just keeps going up through that chain documented above. As the officers 
sorry, Don Elric. I was just wondering if you do have to go into the um, petition process, um, does everybody who wants to participate have to be part of the partition? Or if you get a, an approval to have a deputy officer uh, running the practice, can anybody join in? Anyone can join in. The four is a minimum number on the petition. There can be more. We are not going to disallow those who weren't on the petition though either. They will be a deputy officer for that branch. Practices happening as normal. Thank you. Um, what the branch offer is looking for, and I covered a lot of this when I was talking about it, is what the status allows for the martial activity. So if someone's requesting to do combat and their group's in phase one, it's gonna be denied. Um, those types of things. Um, if they're asking for youth, youth combat during phase one or phase two, it's going to be denied. Um, but we may see those petitions. We just wanna make sure we're giving them the proper diligence and sanity checking against the status. Uh, that they have sufficient experience to be able to run the practice according to our laws. Uh, they understand the plan and COVID guidance uh, in order to enforce it. Um, the person being requested to be appointed as a deputy um, meets the requirements. And all the people in this chain know those, those aspects. Um, the likelihood uh, the person will do regular reporting, that is a judgment call. Um, we have had some marshals who don't report, um, and we've known that systemically, so that person is less likely to get approved if they're not going to be reporting. Uh, and then the likelihood that they'll have enough participants to hold practices, that's where additional participant or petitioners helps the case. So it's, it's in the group's best interest to have more petitioners um, than the minimum. Um, then other considerations are what they've done with other activities. So if someone's asking to do rapier, they previously been the armored marshal, that's a, that's a plus for them. Uh, we will consider things such as recognition uh, from the crown for martial prowess. That shows their uh, long-term uh, commitment to the activity in question. And then other health officers they've held that had requiring reporting, such as seneschal, exchequer, whatever. Um, just shows that they have that capability to do it. Any questions about the petitioning process? Uh, I, I, I will thank you, Sean, for saying we're doing a good job of trying to get the word out about this and trying to get us back. We're trying to be as transparent as we can, and I, I, I did a slight oops with the Thursday or the Friday announcement not being more transparent with the artificial cap to phase one during the pilot. Wasn't malicious intent or anything. It was just a, that we decided this and it wasn't clearly communicated. I did give a bunch of groups a big scare that we did that because they thought they went from, oh look, we're doing really good to, oh shit, we're, we got demoted to phase one. So we must have localized issues. That wasn't the case and wasn't, it was a complete miscommunication on my part. Uh, for education, I put some links in here. Um, all of you will be getting this here in a little bit. It's going to go out to the event on Facebook, and it's going to go out to all the marshals that I emailed, um, so even people who didn't attend. That will include the link to the video, the link to this website, uh, the link to the reopen plan, uh, the health screening questionnaire is going to have all in one communication. Um, but here are some good things. These are just samples of this. Um, tell people what to look for for COVID symptom, like symptoms. Uh, how to wear a mask. Um, it's amazing that they have to tell people how to do that. But uh, uh, having watched people not wear masks correctly in social settings, it's really disturbing that people don't know how to put a mask on. It actually covers their mouth and nose. Some don't cover either. I'm like, why in the world are you bothering? Um, sorry, it's getting cynical. Uh, here's the link for the CDC uh, guidance for disinfecting different surfaces and materials. 
um, as well as how to uh, do it yourself uh, creation of some of those uh, to make down for uh, wiping stuff down. Uh, the general CDC facts, um, just because they are helpful uh, for different people. Uh, video on how to wash your hands, uh, clean your hands, sorry. Um, washing is part of it, but even when you're using the antibacterial stuff, the, the different methods for wire, how you move your hands around, uh, the different parts you need to cover type stuff. Um, how to doff your face mask in PPE. Uh, so if you're wearing disposable gloves, how to take them off, how to take your mask off uh, without doing further contamination. Uh, I, I do like the fact they use the word doff because uh, you don't hear that in modern society. Uh, when you should seek immediate medical care for COVID, uh, there's a video covering those topics. There's a video for the symptoms of heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Most of us are used to that, uh, but it is good to re reiterate that since they will have slightly higher, or may have potentially higher heat um, because of the mask. Um, it definitely, sl I, I, I'm gonna blame it on the mask that I couldn't fight as well. It has nothing to do with the fact that I haven't been training and fighting regularly. It's all about the mask. And then looking for hypoxia symptoms, um, low oxygen levels. That shouldn't be an issue with the masks we use, but if someone happens to show up with an N95 mask or a respirator, uh, which is way overkill, but uh, some people are, are doing that, um, they can have issues with low oxygen levels. Um, so here's how, here's how to keep an eye on that. Any questions on the education or any other aspects of this since that's the, my end for tonight? Your Majesty Marguerite, did you have anything for the folks? Thank you everyone, uh, it's been very informative. Um, Look forward to um, seeing this get into practice, see how it goes. Thank you. Me too. Thank you, Your Majesty. Don Cornelius, you had another one? Yeah, um, this is not a question so much as just a comment and a suggestion that if you have fighters who are using the cloth mask to your face, uh, I recommend bringing more than one. They are less effective if they are wet and you're liable to make them wet over the course of your fighting. So. And that has been added to the plan since it was initially done, the education, that people should bring more than one, especially for combat. Um, the effectiveness does go down with moisture content. And, and uh, let me address Liam's question. Liam, we don't know. We're making this work as we go. And from where PUG started when this plan was already drawn up, what, six weeks ago is when you started, yep. somewhere out there? Yep. To say that it has changed a bit since then is one of the great understatements of all time. <laughs> so yes. as far as where we're going to end up once we actually get to the point where we can do events, no clue. We're going to try. We're going to see what works in the practices. And that'll probably you know be our starting point. But beyond that, who knows? OK, thank you, Avery. No worries. And we have other aspects to deal with events that aren't dealt with at practices um, that we'll have to consider. Events will only happen in phase three because by uh, government uh, guidance from both states, they can't happen until phase three. We can't have large enough gatherings. Okay. Um, but hey, there Pug. are some things we may do that the states don't, uh, such as requiring face masks. Okay. Uh, but those all go in. For all the work that you and your team have been doing on this, thank you very much. I probably would have lost my mind by now. Well, lost it more. Yep. Uh, Thorgear asked about Crown Tournament. Right now, we are part of the reason we wanted to start the pilots was to figure out how this does affect our upcoming events. Right now, they are still on the schedule. Uh, there's a possibility they will be canceled if we do not have, um, if we can't do this safely or if there is localized rebounds and the government's closed down um, activities. 
So the, a number of people on Friday were raising concerns with this because there was some uh, increased counts in both Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, the plan luckily did what it was supposed to with those branches that were having those and you'll see some of them got stopped. Um, so uh, it, it, the logic seems to be working pretty well. All right, I think that's it for tonight. I'm gonna to stop the recording. First I'll stop sharing, stop recording, and then we can have a good night.